Hello everyone. In the previous video, we looked at how we can make some arbitrary calls with the cloud, SAP Cloud SDK. Uh, but more than likely, what would happen in your application is that you would want to bring the remote API into your application or data service itself. Uh, so let's see how we can do this. Uh, there are quite a few tutorials already on how we can do this, but let me go ahead and do this real quick. Uh, so I'm going to check out the next branch, uh, which is uh, the branch four. Uh, so in branch four, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, get the, uh, I'm going to get the uh, CDS file, the EDMX file. Uh, so this is the metadata file uh, for my API business partner. I'm going to copy that into the SRV folder. So I've copied the uh, metadata file and then I run this command CDS import SRV and then the name of this file. Uh, so I've already run this and when I run this, uh, it's uh, the CAP framework is going to create this external folder right here and it's uh, going to create this uh, CSON file for me. So it's going to convert this uh, uh, XML file uh, into this uh, CSON file, which is in JSON format. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the CAP framework is also going to create uh, this section in my package.json file for me. Uh, it is going to create uh, this section except for these two lines right here that I added manually. Uh, so you need to tell where to get the remote data from. So in my case, I've added this uh, credential section. Uh, so when I run in development mode, uh, it is going to use this URL uh, to get the data. Uh, so once I have uh, the CSON file and this uh, section in the package.json file, uh, so now I'm ready to bring this uh, remote API into my OData service in this app. So if I go in here to my schema.cds, uh, I have added, uh, I have referenced this uh, CSON file, and then I have added this entity business partners, uh, which is uh, referencing this A underscore business partner uh, that is from this uh, remote API. And I'm only bringing back uh, these three fields. And notice that I don't have to specify the data type because all of that is specified in the CSON file in the metadata file that is already there. Uh, so now, uh, now that I have this, uh, I should be able to expose this as an OData service. Uh, so I go into my CDS file and I expose this uh, business partners as a OData service right here. So far, so good. So now if I try to run it, uh, so if I go into my request.http file, and then if I try to run this uh, get business partners, I'm going to get, oh, I didn't, uh, I need to run CDS watch. So I'm going to get an exception uh, saying, because this is a remote service, the CAP framework doesn't know how to read the data. Uh, so it's going to ask us to implement the, uh, uh, it cannot be served generically, and that means uh, we need to go ahead and do the implementation part. Uh, so let me go ahead and uh, stop this, and I'm going to go to the next branch, get checkout five. Okay, so in five, uh, what I have done is in my server in this uh, JS file, uh, because now we need to go ahead and implement the read operation ourselves. Uh, so I've added this uh, new SRV.on, uh, and this is going to uh, uh, this is going to handle the read of the business partners, and this is using SAP CAP, the SAP CAP CDS query language, and this is the recommended approach. And the reason I'm showing this is because there is also an approach from within the SAP Cloud SDK to do the same thing, and I'm going to show that next. Uh, but if you have a project and if you have to read from a remote API, uh, then this is the recommended approach to go through. Uh, so here we are using the SAP CAP, the CDS query language from CAP. Uh, so now if I run CDS watch, and now I can run the, I can get the business partners uh, because we are doing a select dot where, uh, and I'm getting all the, everyone that has a first name and a last name. So if, uh, if the first name is empty or the last name is empty, uh, then I skip uh, those, uh, those rows. Uh, so now if I go ahead and run the business partners, I will get the business partners uh, from reading from this uh, package.json file. And this is my location right here. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, instead of uh, using the, um, uh, I, I can also run it in hybrid mode and go ahead and use this extensibility. Uh, this is, uh, if I go into my uh, SAP BTP, let me go ahead and show you my SAP BTP's uh, 
and if I go into the uh, part uh, into my sub account and if I go into my destination I also have uh, this SAP S4 HANA cloud extensibility and uh, now this is actually connecting to an actual SAP S4 HANA cloud system in uh, cloud system and notice uh, that it has all this uh, communication arrangement and all of that uh, complex stuff already set up uh, so yeah so if I want to run the same thing in hybrid mode I can simply run this in hybrid mode and this is going to use this S4 HANA cloud extensibility so the data is going to be different from that of the uh, API business hub so let me run this in hybrid mode uh, dash dash uh, profile hybrid and it's uh, going to give me the same 10, date, uh, 10 rows, uh, but it's going to read from the actual S4 HANA cloud. Uh, so let me go ahead and run this. Uh, if I go into my request.http file, uh, let me close it, open it, and let me go ahead and run this here. And you should see that I should be getting a completely different set of data because this is actually getting it from the SAP S4 HANA cloud. Uh, and I'm running it in hybrid mode. Uh, so I'm running it using this uh, destination right here. Uh, but in this, uh, in this uh, implementation, though, uh, we are not using SAP uh, uh, cloud SDK. Uh, we are using the SAP CAP CDS query language. Uh, but I did mention that there is a way to do this uh, with the SAP cloud SDK as well. Uh, so if I go to the next branch, get checkout six, uh, then I can show you how we can run this with the SAP cloud SDK. Uh, so what I have done is I have commented this uh, section out. So I have commented this section out. Uh, but instead, now I'm going to use the SAP Cloud SDK way of uh, doing it. Uh, again, uh, this is not something that you should be doing if you have the option of using the SAP CAP query language. Uh, but I'm just showing this uh, because I want to set the stage for the next sister video uh, where we will be using a batch operation. Uh, so I'm, I want to set the stage, and that's why I'm showing you this. Uh, so here you can use the SAP Cloud SDK, make the query, you're getting all the uh, partners, you're selecting just these three fields. Uh, just like what we are doing here, we are selecting these three columns. So here we are selecting these three fields. And then here we are getting the first name not equals. Uh, they all have to have a valid first name and last name. And then I have the add custom headers to submit the API key and so on. Again, here I have the option of using the destination name like this, or I can do the URL. Uh, so if I run it in the um, hybrid mode, uh, then I will be using the destination name, and this is going to use the destination that is available in SAP BTP. Uh, so I'm going to run this, and this is uh, now going to use the SAP Cloud SDK uh, to get the data. So now if I run my uh, request.http, uh, it's going to get the same data from the uh, SAP S4 HANA Cloud system. Uh, uh, except now it's using the uh, it's using the uh, cloud SDK way of doing it of getting the data. So if I run it, uh, you can see I'm getting the same data from the SAP S4 HANA system. Uh, but this is using the cloud SDK. Now one other thing uh, I forgot to mention uh, is uh, before you use the SAP cloud SDK the way we have set it up right here. Um, so here you have it's kind of a type. Uh, like you can get all the code completion and everything. Uh, in order to do this, uh, what you can do is you can generate the OData client, and that's what I have done right here. Um, and the way you can generate the OData client is I have a commands.txt file, and here I have uh, the command to run. Uh, so, so you would run this command. Uh, so you would copy the EDMX file. The EDMX file is already there in this uh, in this uh, folder right here. Uh, so you would run this command right here. And uh, the one other thing that you need to provide is the options, the service options.json file. Uh, so I have the service options.json file, and I have a package name, a directory name, a base path, and so on. Uh, so by running this command, it's going to generate the OData client. Uh, so the OData client is already generated here. And that uh, gives you all these nice code completion. And if you're going to be using TypeScript, uh, then it uh, also provides a type safe way of uh, writing code as well. Uh, so again, um, you can implement it in 
either way you want uh, you can do it through the cap sdk way of doing it or the cloud sdk way of doing it uh, the cap way of doing it is recommended um, uh, but i'm setting the stage for the batch operation uh, which we will see in the next uh, video thanks